What's up guys? Today I'm coming at you with a, a quick video of how to add a Harbor Freight uh, external tank or you know like an auxiliary tank to your main compressor. Uh, this is a Porter Cable 150 pounds. It's a 3.5 SEFM at 90 pounds. Uh, it does pretty good like it is. It's got a six pound tank and then I got a five pound helper tank and I was kind of show you how I did it. I bought this off of Amazon. It came pre-made just like this. You got uh, these industrial fittings, the quarter inch uh, industrial fittings. Uh, if you look at that, that is a sharp, good looking piece of industrial art in my opinion. Uh, I paid $11.55 or $12, something like that for it. These things are normally $4 a piece and then, you know, whatever you pay for this. So, I mean, that was a heck of a deal. I've seen a lot of people hook these up. I've never seen it done this way. Uh, you don't have to modify this tank here. Uh, it's the regular tank. You got the gauge and even the crappy old Schrader valve. What I did do was put a 3 8 on there with a quick connect, which I already had. Uh, so I could take this. This will still be portable. I can unhook it and take it with me or whatever I need to do. And that's what I was going for. I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to make anything permanent. The way it hooks up, you hook that side into, and on the compressor, I've got a, uh, a pressure, a, shit, I can't, can't think. Um, in order to control your air pressure damn my mind went blank on me <laughs> but anyway i got a to control my air pressure i got a it's an air pressure regulator <laughs> duh um i broke it with a wrench dropped it on it but i mean it still works i run 120 pounds into that tank because it's a 125 pound tank and this one's 150 and i just keep it regulated I keep the regulator at 120 and run 120 in the both tanks. Uh, take one of the sides and just connect it into it. Take this one, feed that to it. Just like that. And then like for my main air hose, which is a 55, I mean a 50 foot air hose, I'll hook it in like somewhere here or not and I run it kind of out the door and on the back side of the building there is a is where I keep the line and then I got a little small 25 foot hose that I could hook into it if I wanted to 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 you know run in the shop here uh, like spray the lawnmower off or <laughs> spray the dirt and shit out of here or whatever but um that's just really a extra hose that i'm really not using uh if you if you bear with me a second um i'm gonna run this i'll run the pump up pump both tanks up and kind of show you what what the difference is i might i'll show you i'll show you some air tools and things like that for the people that's gonna say well, you got it hooked on the other side of the pressure regulator. Well, if you keep this at 120, when you use an air gun, it goes to like 85 or 90 pounds pressure, static pressure, working pressure. So uh, for anybody that says, well, you're gonna have, but you can't control the regulator. Well, most tools use 90 pounds per square inch. So when it's at 120, when you're using working pressure, it's gonna go down to about 85 or 90. So that's why I did it on this side. But see this air compressor here, the, the valve in it's broke right here. So I came off of the safety valve side of it to create this. And this is kind of why I got the setup. but that tank there's got a safety valve on it at 125. So hopefully it ain't, I ain't gonna blow myself up, but you get what I'm saying, but hold on with me, air it up, and I'll show you some more tools and show you the difference and whatnot. All right, hang on. All right, guys, um, 
I got it. I got my air pressure up. I got one, about 155 in that tank. I got that regulator to 120. And I've got about 100, well, 120 pounds in that tank there. So now it's all aired up. You kind of see how it works. And what I was telling you about the other side, this regulator in this thing went bad years ago, like two years ago. And to, to replace it was like 60, 70, 80 bucks. And I just said to hell with that and just came off of this side. So there's no air coming out this side, but I did stick the safety regular, I mean the safety blow off valve in there just in case I had some air go to that side, maybe cause this thing, you know, not to blow up, but um, it's got a drain valve in the bottom. So, you know, you just make sure you keep the water drained out and hope it don't rust. Cause these things will rust from the inside out. The reason why I added that Harbor Freight tank to it is, to be honest, is because I had it. Um, I didn't go out and buy all this just to do this. I already had all this stuff. Uh, I just need a little bit more air volume because sometimes I do like to change tires and stuff. Like in the, well, change, you know, swap the wheels and, you know, rotate my tires and things here. And occasionally, I mean, I don't, I don't do it enough to have a big giant compressor, so that's why I don't have one. This will run a nail gun just perfect without a helper tank. Uh, you know, plus I like to blow out like air filters and uh, like you know the filter for the house and air conditions and things like that. Uh, that's kind of how I did it. Uh, we'll do a little test. Uh, I'm gonna turn the air pressure off to that other tank, and I'm gonna just use this tank, and we'll. We'll take some lug nuts off and see, you know, how efficient the air compressor is without the helper tank. And then we'll do it with the helper tank. So if you want to see that, stay tuned. All right, guys, it's, uh, this is just my compressor, no helper tank. We'll see what we can do before it kicks on. Uh, cobalt gun, 700 foot pounds of torque. Uh, here it goes. Compressor kicked on. All right, so I took five off before my air compressor kicked on without a helper tank. I'm gonna put these back on. Uh, well, hell, I'll just go ahead and put them back on. Right? I'll do it. Let me let that thing pump up and then I'll do it with my external tank. With the combination of the both, of, you know what I'm saying, with the helper tank. All right, guys, here it is with my, uh, with my helper tank added to it. It should be better because there'll be more line pressure because I have my pressure gauge turned down to, to 120 pounds, but it can't consistently deliver that because it's such a small tank. But with the helper tank, I should have the right, you know, it should take them right off, put them right back on without struggling like it did a while ago. All right, here goes. <coughs> See how much more pressure I got <coughs> with that extra volume? <coughs> <coughs> no, no troubles. My air compressor still hadn't kicked on yet. Now, I ain't no NASCAR tire changer. They got flared ends on the end of their socket so they can just hit it. Where this ain't, and plus this is like a $70 air gun. All right, air compressor still hadn't kicked off. Let's try it again. Still, no air compressor kicking on. That extra five pounds of volume is crazy. There it goes. See, that was two tires. And if you were rotating your tires, you, 
you wouldn't have to wait for the compressor. So but that's kind of how it worked. Uh, let me put these back on. guys I appreciate it uh let me turn that compressor off and I'll get right back with you all right guys uh that's kind of the end of my video uh, I don't really know what else to say to you other than the reason like I told you before the reason that I done this was because it's what parts I had on hand I had everything the only thing I bought was this adapter everything else I already had it doesn't turn your compressor into a bigger tank per se but it does give it more volume and this one does pretty good by itself i mean it'll take five lug nuts off where it kicks on so i mean that's decent with that one i mean you you saw the difference in the air how much volume of air i had and that's why i did it and the way i did it was you know so it's not permanent so i can use it you know i can still take my tank with me if i need to air up a tank somewhere else but anyway, uh, I appreciate you watching the video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful or helpful, uh, I'm not saying this is the right way or the best way to do this. I've seen it all kinds of different ways. But you don't have to change the manifold in your tank. If you look at this helper tank, that is a standard stock uh, tank other than that line. So everyone else I've seen you had they changed the valve they pulled the manifold out of there and put you know bought 40 50 dollars worth of parts but anyway that's kind of you know my video and how i did it and uh you know <laughs> it is what it is but anyway the reason i did it was because i was thinking about a new tank i mean a new air compressor and you know i just don't think i used one long enough enough to you know buy a new one so that's why i did this but anyway, and I've had that, that air compressor is 20 years old, so <laughs> it's way worse. I mean, if it burns up now, I got my money's worth. But anyway, I appreciate you watching the video. I know I'm rambling on, and please excuse me. I talk too much when I make these videos, but I don't want to, you know, forget or leave something out. But, you know, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment. Like, share, subscribe, or whatever, if you want to. If you don't, it, it don't matter. I don't care. I just appreciate you watching, and uh, y'all have a good evening. Good day, good evening, good night, whenever you watch this video. Shotty Knife, out.